All right, what's going on guys? Trev back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing another Walking Dead video for today leading up to the second half of the Walking Dead Season 9. In this one, we're going to give our thoughts. We have a recent interview with Tom Payne where we basically got answers surrounding Jesus' exit. Jesus' exit explained. And spoiler warning, if you guys are not caught up for the Walking Dead television series, I, the title is just, <laughs> I know it's spoilery, but I waited like a week, so, you know, it's pretty much a week, I think everybody knows by now who still cares about the Walking Dead, of course, what's happened, and, uh, you know, what they're doing and everything, so, of course, mid-season finale, Jesus gets, well, spoiler warning, killed off, right, obviously, so, it's what it is, uh, link will be in the description to the thehollywoodreporter.com, and it says, Star gets candid about his exit, uh, quote, it was constant frustration. And then here's what uh, what it gets into. Quote, uh, I spent a long time hoping my character was going to have more to do. The outgoing uh, series regular tells The Hollywood Reporter about the reasons behind the shocking mid-season finale death. So then they go through it a little bit. They explain the whispers and stuff. And, uh, you know, some of the, uh, yeah, they say that the uh, the masks are refurbished, which I thought was kind of funny. The, the uh, skins are refurbished, right? So I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, it's funny wording, right? And then we've got, okay, so it says, uh, I know people will be disappointed and shocked, he tells THR with a smile in his uh, voice, but I'm happy. Uh, how did Payne's Walking Dead exit come together? What are some of the biggest missed opportunities with the character along the way from his perspective? And then, of course, he goes into a lot of these details. So... They asked him first, how are you feeling with the secret now out in the open? And then uh, Tom said, I'm excited for everyone to see it. I, I just wanted to be part of telling a good story that shocks people. That's what uh, the show has been about for me. Uh, when they came to me with the idea, I said, uh, as long as it's a really cool moment, let's do it. Uh, and, well, I just remember myself and say, I think it was. Like, honestly, I think it was an unbelievably shocking moment. And I thought it was really good. And uh, even though I know there are a lot of fans of, of Jesus that are sad. And it says here, uh, I know a lot of people are going to be bummed about it, uh, but I've been bummed uh, for the last two years uh, that the character hasn't gotten uh, as much cool stuff on the show as he had in the comic books. They gave me a really cool ending, and I'm happy with that. So it sounds like he's pretty much happy with the uh, the ending for Jesus in the television series. It doesn't sound like from that that he's really disappointed, uh, like someone like uh, Kim Dickens, who played uh, Madison, for example, was really uh, disappointed with what happened with uh, with Madison. Um, it sounds like he's mostly, you know, cool with and happy with that they they did something really cool with his kind of final uh, episode and his final, his final part in the series. And it says, was it your choice to leave The Walking Dead, or was this a decision from the writers? And then, okay, so this is the important part here that we're going to get into. He says, they were aware I wouldn't be unhappy if they got rid of me. <laughs> so let's, 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 uh, let's read that again. Um, we got a double negative here. Uh, they were aware I wouldn't be unhappy if they got rid of me. So it's, it, you know, so it kind of sounds like to me that he's basically saying that uh, they were aware he was unhappy and uh, maybe they felt like they were doing him a favor by killing him off or maybe they felt like, you know, he would be okay with being killed off and then he could go and, you know, do other projects and, and go do other series or movies or whatever. Then it says here, uh, I expressed unhappiness last season. I was very frustrated with what the character had been doing. He arrived in a very cool way, and then he floundered at the hilltop. Uh, during the war with the Saviors, the only person he had a fight with was a man who was on his side, uh, in Lenny James's uh, Morgan, of course. In the comics, uh, he has this massive fight with Negan, uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He catches a grenade and throws it back at his enemies. He's the most capable member of the entire group, and he wasn't used at all on the show. Uh, in the background, uh, I was training every single week. Uh, I was ready and ro roaring or raring to go. Uh, you can't help but feel a little bit despondent when you're not released to do some cool stuff. Uh, it was mutual, and they knew I would be okay with it. Uh, it's an amazing show, and uh, I was uh, so honored to be part of it. But at the same time, being the same character without anything fun to do is a bit frustrating. Okay, so let's stop here for a minute, and then we'll read the rest because there's more. Um, but 
you know, so I, you know, a little bit sad reading this through, but okay, so, so here's basically, let's recap what happened with Jesus. So Jesus comes into the series in season six, and he comes into his first episode, and it's kind of like this, uh, it's a fun episode, but he kind of comes across as like a trickster type of character, which is a lot different from the comic book version. I never really got that vibe so much from the comic version. I mean, elusive, yes. But they played it up like you have the, uh, remember there's uh, Daryl and Rick and then there's like the, the truck and it goes in the water. And, and you know, you just had, there was like the joke, I think, on Talking Dead and online after that uh, you could have like, you know, Daryl chasing him around and stuff and have some, uh, 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 was it Betty Hill music or whatever or, or the, uh, the, <laughs> the, the classic uh, the classic music where, you know, like, doo, 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 doo. so kind of kind of like a comedy uh, approach. That's one of the things I remember from when he first came in, in the second half of season six. I'm going off the top of my head here. I haven't, I haven't checked back these episodes, but I'm usually pretty good at remembering episode, you know, uh, seasons and, and, and arcs and everything from the TV series. So we have that. So he kind of comes in in kind of a joking kind of way, like, my gun, Daryl punches him in the face. <laughs> the face. And uh, so, but... It was just, it was just strange, you know. It was different, and uh, it was strange. But I feel sorry for him because here you have him, and he's like, he's like training really hard, and he's doing like all this work to prep and everything like that. And then when it comes time to film, they're like barely using him at all. And then if you think about all that war, he was probably pretty excited because he thought, oh man, this is going to be cool. Now I get to do some really cool stuff, and uh, I get to fight in the war and this whole thing. And uh, they kind of went with this character who, if you guys notice, the characters that seem to be more humanitarian, uh, like Carl, Therese, uh, Jesus, you know, <laughs> the ones that don't want to kill anybody, they tend to not last that long, if you guys haven't noticed in the series, right? <laughs> they tend to get killed off pretty quickly. The characters that are more willing to kill when they need to, uh, you know, just based on track record and the way I'm looking at it here, I'm thinking, like, those characters tend to do pretty well, right? Um, so I don't know, but... So he kind of comes in in that way, and maybe there's a lot of truth to what he's saying here, whereas in the TV series version, it just never quite felt the same as the comic version did. Now, he did feel like a really uh, a good fighter and everything like that, and, uh, you know, there was the part with him and Morgan in season eight that was pretty good, but, um, you know, now Morgan had expressed, or, or Lenny James had expressed before, that he wanted to be used more as well in the TV series. And, of course, for him it worked out great because he went off to fear and then he got basically his whole his own whole show pretty much. He's basically the Rick, or I guess Daryl if you want to say now, even though Norman Reedus doesn't like that, for fear, right? <laughs> so uh, so he's the, lead for, he's the lead for Fear of the Walking Dead now. Um, but it sounds like in, in Jesus' case maybe that strategy didn't work so well. Or maybe he was just unhappy in that whole thing and and um you know it just it just didn't work out that well for him the, the thing is with all out war they had the comic series version and then they added in even more stuff for the television series they added in the parts for simon they added in jadis and all her stuff and of course she became very important later on um but i can understand what he's saying here he didn't get maybe he wanted to come in and do some really cool action based uh, sequences and stuff, and he got to do a few, but it was quite limited, right? It was it was pretty limited, which, like I've said before in videos, I think it's kind of a shame because if he had just held on a little bit longer and been like, okay, don't worry about, you know, hindsight 2020, of course, he had no idea in season eight that Morgan was going to leave, Andrew Lincoln was going to leave, he probably didn't know Carl was getting killed off. He probably didn't know Maggie was going to leave. Like, he didn't know any of this stuff, and he was he it was feeling really crowded, right, for him. And so it's really unfortunate for him that uh, that he felt that way and that maybe he voiced his opinions. And then, and then it's like now all this room is opened up in the series. There's, there's almost too much room. There isn't like enough. It feels like it went from the one way and then it's now the other way here where it's like there's, there's too much room because you're missing so many of those people from season eight are gone now. And it would be really cool. But then at the same time, they've already kind of planned this out and everything and, and kind of made this decision. So it's kind of unfortunate for fans of Jesus. And it's unfortunate for, for Tom as well, too, just the way things work out some, sometimes. And we have the benefit of hindsight. We have the benefit of looking back and saying, like, you know, but easy to say in that moment. The Walking Dead's cooking on all cylinders. You know, you got all these characters in the war. You got everybody going crazy. And you could have never predicted that you would have all those people leave in under a year's time. You would have never, you would have never predicted that in a million years, um, unless you were in the inside in the know. Then it says, uh, when the call came, season nine showrunner Angela Kang was surprised at how laid back I was about it. So it sounds like she, maybe she, maybe they were going to do it anyway. Mm. So it maybe it wouldn't have even mattered. Maybe if he was, maybe even if he was happy about the role and really excited and everything like that, um, 
you know, they they might have just done it anyway, right? Because that's The Walking Dead too, right? You can have a character like Carl where everybody expects him to live forever, and then they they decide to kind of swerve the audience or go a different way, and um, you know, and and so you know whether someone's in it for the long haul or not. Sometimes they the thing is they have to have the deaths right to for it to be The Walking Dead. Like they have to have them, and it's always going to be difficult for them to pick who they're going to go with. Because they got to go with somebody, and uh, yeah, man. So then it then laughs, and then it says, uh, it was the first time uh, she's ever made that call to tell an actor about their character's impending death. Uh, Andy and Lauren's deals uh, had been worked out before the season, so this was the first time uh, she called. And, well, that's some new information right there, right, is that their deals had already been worked out before. Um, but I guess that would have been, like, just before, right? Like, like really new, right? Um so this was the first time she called and told me, and I said, yeah, as long as it's a cool ending, because uh, this character really is such a strong character. Yeah, that's true. I, let's just stop right there for a minute. That's true. It would have to be something... He is. He is really strong character. So it would have to be something really... Especially in hand-to-hand combat, for him to lose in that fashion, it would have to be something like um, really, really brutal and awesome. But... Because there's an ego about it too, right? And, and the fans would feel that uh, that Jesus is such a strong fighter one on one that it would take like someone like Beta to beat him or something like that. And that's normally true. But uh, as good as he is, that could have happened to anybody. That could happen to Rick. That could happen to Daryl. That could happen to doesn't matter how good you are because it's uh, it's knowing your enemy and not knowing your enemy, right? They didn't know their enemy. They they knew there was this weird herd that was following them seemingly. Um, but they didn't know that they were not all just regular walkers. Up until that point, it looked like he's killing a whole bunch here, and it looks like they're all the same. And then you have one that fakes him, makes him miss, and then surprisingly gets him, right? So it's like the um, the punch you don't see coming that knocks you out. It's what it is. That's what it is. It's the one you don't see. That's the one that gets you, right? Um, she called me and told me, and I said, yeah, as long as it's a cool ending, because this character is really such a strong character, it would have to be a ton of people or a real surprise in order for him to die, uh, which is what it ended up being. Uh, I wanted to make sure we were telling a story that surprises the audience, uh, and it did. Uh, just for me to say, it did surprise everybody, I think. Uh, that's what the show is all about. No one is safe. Uh, it sets up the whispers in a great way. It was a mutual thing, and I was really happy about it. The whole episode, I had this huge smile on my face. I kept thinking, this is so fun. Uh, this is what um, you know I wanted to be doing. Uh, I felt like Jesus was feeling... Uh, Jesus had been cooped up at the hilltop for two years, and he wants to get out there and do shit. Uh, It may have gotten him killed in the end, but at least he got uh, into a fight with his sword. Um, The whole episode told such a great story. I was happy to tell that story. Uh, This is what the show's all about, or this is what the show's about, and I just wanted to be a part of that. Uh, You want to be a part of the shocking sequences. I ended up being very lucky in the end. I got to introduce you to the Saviors, and now I'm introducing you to the Whispers. It's a pivotal moment for the show. And again, there's more there. We won't read through the absolute, you know, entire thing because there's lots there for you guys to go through. There's some questions after about him saying goodbye to Jesus' hardest part, and he says how much he loved the character and everything like that, and it was difficult to say goodbye, that kind of deal. Uh, sad to say goodbye. And then, of course, um, his dinner that they had after to celebrate him him leaving and his time coming up. And then, uh, let's see here, um, just some just some other different questions and, and things that they get into with him, uh, him, him about him playing an iconic uh, uh, gay character. So there's part of that. And um, yeah, so so you guys can go through that if um, if you want to read it through. So it kind of makes me sad to read through, um, but you know I'm happy that he's okay with it. I'm happy that he you know that he uh, felt like it you know makes sense for everybody. And again, uh, even though he wasn't maybe he he wasn't really happy, he wouldn't be unhappy if they did. Um, Maybe it had nothing to do with it. Maybe they were just gonna. Maybe they would have just ended up doing it anyway, right? Maybe that's just how how it would have gone, regardless. So I am kind of sad, you know. Of course, after reading that, and and you know, because he did work really hard in the series for several years there, and he was, you know, maybe not like one of the earliest survivors in the series to kind of come in, but uh, you know, he came in and he's been in the series for since season six, the second half. So 
Um, yeah, it's, it's sad to see him go and everything, and I get why, you know, hardcore fans of the character are kind of sad that he never got to be as cool as the comic counterpart version, and I think we can easily say that. He probably would agree, uh, based on his uh, statements there in, in the interview, that he never got to do some of the cool stuff that the comic version did get to do. Um, but the TV series, you know, as it's, as it's going to be, especially now, um, is going to be a completely different interpretation um, of that story and adaptation uh, than the comics. And as time goes on, it feels like it's not getting more similar. It feels like it's becoming more different than the comic version all the time. You know, you don't have all those characters I mentioned, you know, all of them. And, uh, you know, and then in, in the case of season eight, where maybe Jesus would have gotten all of that storyline, Morgan actually survived longer than he did in the comics. And so he was there. Uh, um, you know, a character that had been in the series since the first season for many years and maybe took some of those parts that Jesus may have gotten if uh, if he wasn't uh, there. So unfortunately, it's just the way it goes sometimes. But, you know, I think uh, we're all thankful for Tom Payne for his work in The Walking Dead. I enjoyed seeing him, you know, as the TV series version of Jesus. And, uh, yeah, it's just uh, somebody's, they got to they gotta kill somebody, right, to introduce the whispers. So at least, at least he's happy with it. And he recognizes that it was a really cool death, and I think we all got to admit that it was. Plus, if you think about the TV series version, right now it's looking like everyone's going to die at some point, right? <laughs> so, so you can't really be upset when they kill you off. It's like they're probably going to kill off everybody eventually. If the series goes for 20 years, everybody's going to die at some point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like in the end, it'll probably be the characters that are still left if they get to season 20 or 15 or whatever they want to do, if they can reasonably do it for that long. The characters that are still alive are going to be like completely different than they are now, and um, you know, who knows who will be the true last man standing uh, and be in the series the longest. Maybe it'll be Daryl, maybe it'll be Carol, maybe it'll be freaking Tara for all we know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so yeah, man. And then there was some uh, some. We'll go through some of your guys' questions. Uh, some people asked about the ocean side. There is an article too from comicbook.com about what happened to the ocean side, and uh, you can look into that one if uh, if you uh, want to as well. Uh, it says basically from Angela Kang, I don't know, Oceanside is out there. Showrunner Kang told Entertainment Weekly when asked about their whereabouts. Uh, there are all these communities that have disbanded that are there. Uh, we haven't told much Oceanside stuff this year, but there may be uh, stuff in Oceanside someday. So they'll probably come back to it at some point. And I think they will. It's just that, you know, it depends uh, on what they're doing. If maybe it'll be, maybe they'll be included in the flashback with Michonne, maybe not. If they're not, then maybe we'd have to wait till season 10 or 11. I don't think anyone's clamoring to see the Oceanside anyway. Um, you know, I don't know of anybody who really is that big a fan of, of uh, what they do, except for that new, what's what's the new guy's name from the teenager? One of the teenagers from the Hilltop who wants to who wants to become a fisherman, right? Because it's all women. Uh, Diana uh, Glenmere says, uh, hey, Trev, how about uh, Henry ending up in the drunk tank? Carol's going to be pissed. And that's true, man. Carol is going to be super pissed that Henry has ended up in the, uh, the Hilltop uh, drunk tank, yeah, very true, uh, and is about to get into some trouble if he meets uh, if he meets Lydia, which is just going to be so strange to see. I don't even know how this is going to feel the second half of the season when we see that happen. If it does, uh, Ace uh, Mannington says, uh, "What a waste of an awesome character. Very unchar uncharacteristic way for him to go. Made him look like an amateur. I don't think it made him look like an amateur. I think he just didn't." No, again, like I said earlier, he just didn't know. And if you just don't know, that's why, you know, having information about the enemy is so valuable. If you don't know what to anticipate, if you don't know what to expect, you could miss one swing and they could get you, right? And that's it. And it takes more energy to miss than it does to uh, to be blocked or to hit. So uh, if you swing and you miss totally, it, uh, it throws you, it can throw you right off balance. And then um, if you overcommit, and the person makes you miss, then they can counter you really well. And that's what happened. Uh, Nicholas Taylor says, Hey, Trev, uh, are you going to make a Death Predictions video for the second half of Season 9? Yeah, probably. I probably will. But at this time, I just, like, I'm just feeling like, I just have, you know, just stop killing people for a while. You know, like, like I guess you had to do it to bring in the uh, the Whisperers. And the Whisperers probably going to kill a bunch of people. Uh, maybe we'll get into that in a video coming up here soon. Uh, there was a statement made by uh, Ryan Hurst of Blaze Beta who said that they're going <laughs> to kill everyone. So uh, we'll see. Uh, but, yeah, I'll probably do I'll probably do a Death Predictions video, like, in a couple weeks for the second half. Uh, probably before Christmas time or around Christmas time. I really got to think hard for that one and go through and, like, think about what they're going to do because... Uh, again, um, you know, there probably should be some big deaths upcoming at the end of this year 
at the end of the season, but I'm just sitting here thinking, like, I don't know who the hell it's going to be. Maybe you just do, like, one major character, like Gabriel or Rosita or something, and then you do a bunch of uh, C or B listers, those maybe Alden or something, I don't know. <laughs> Cast seven, but then again, he's like a he's like a 2.0 Jesus in some ways, isn't he? Cast 79, Hilltop and everything, and could be somebody who could help Terror or something. Uh, Cast 79 says, uh, but... Uh, Ten more years of Walking Dead. The show needs to end already before the whole thing is ruined uh, by greed of AMC. Uh, they ruined the show. Season 9 was uh, boring. And now we're left uh, with Tara and uh, sign language bullshit. Dot, dot, dot. Have fun. So Cass is pissed off. Not everybody is enjoying the direction the Walking Dead is taking right now. But then again, um, you know, I mean, it's like, what would you rather have cast? Basically, the first Walking Dead is over. You know, if you want to say, if you want to look at it that way, you can say that Episode Five is the last episode for the original Walking Dead. What we're seeing now is a continuation and a new interpretation of the series. They could rebrand it. They could have done it as a mid-season finale and then launched The Walking Dead Two or something if they really wanted to after the six-year time skip. They chose to do it on the same brand, which also makes sense too because you're going to get the carry from everybody else. Uh, that's been watching it all the way through and going to continue watching it. Uh, and maybe you might not enjoy this version of The Walking Dead as much as you did the Rick-led Walking Dead before. I don't know. Um, but if you give it a chance, you might you might just find that, that you do like it too. I don't know how anybody couldn't have enjoyed uh, how exciting that was at the end of Episode 8. I mean, personally, I was just freaking out. You guys saw my reaction. It was just unbelievable, man. I thought it was so exciting. So, um, But you can't please everybody. So it's what it is. And... Um, you know, give it a chance, man. Give it. Don't don't uh, judge it too early. The whispers are coming, man. It's going to be great, right? Don't uh, <laughs> kill it for all of us. Uh, Lizzie French says, um, "Hey, Trav, uh, did you notice the walker in the woods that uh, looks at Alden and Luke, uh, new guys in Magnus Group, uh, is dressed? Uh, he's the music teacher, right? Luke, right? I'm still getting to know their names. I still I don't I still don't know all of Magnus Group's names off by heart. So that's something I should go through and you know memorize for these videos with you guys." Is dressed the same as Alpha when she walks up to the hilltop gates. Same person, I think so. Love the videos and thanks. So that's cool, man. We gotta watch out for Alpha. So uh, I think she's wearing in the uh, trailer a very black uh, long sleeve, like in the comics. I think it's long sleeve, just like in the comics. She wears like a black long sleeve, and then she has an Ouroboros on her belt buckle. So heads up for that. It's a snake uh, eating its own tail. So it's like a, a figure eight type of deal. The snake eats and eats and eats and eats and eats. Um, I think they did that too on, did they do that too on Fear? They had a zombie that kept eating, was it eating crabs or something? I don't know. And then they'd fall out, something like that. And he'd eat it again or something. <laughs> something like that. Or scorpions or something. I forget exactly. Um, not crabs. Uh, <laughs> weird if a zombie had crabs. Uh, CPH Mail says, uh, Tom was happy to leave, uh, because, uh, his character was not exciting in the TV show like it was in the comics. So why don't we wrap up with that one here for today? And then we'll do another video, maybe uh, tomorrow or the next day for you guys. Um, you know, okay, so it's what it is. Every different character is going to be different in the TV series. It's not always going to be the same as, as the comic. And over time, if you look at Rick, for example, like if there's one character you probably would want to be almost exactly the same as the comics, it's probably Rick or the same or better. And even his storyline over the long term has turned out to be way different than it was in the comics, just due to the reality of the adaptation, real life, uh, personal life, it's just different, right? So it's going to be different. And with with Jesus, with Tom Paine, um, you know, it does feel like he's being killed off kind of prematurely. But at the same time, you want to bring in the whispers strong. You can't delay things forever and just have kind of relaxing whatever episodes. Guys like uh, Cast are going to get really pissed off, you know. So if you didn't do the death, um, you know, people might be even more pissed because they'd say, oh, the midseason finale sucked. And so we watched this whole half, and yes, it was Rick leaving, but after that it just sucked and they didn't do anything. At least in this way, they introduced the Whispers in a very strong capacity, and uh, you know it's sad and everything like that. And uh, he gets to have an awesome death of the, of the series, similar to his character. Honestly, he's like, his character is most similar to Glenn, I would say. You know, uh, in terms of what he does, in terms of like his personality of being out there in the field and everything, in terms of having heart and adding heart to the show, and then of course uh, with his death as well, used to bring in the next big set of villains, which you need to get over strong. You need those villains to come in and look really strong and look like a uh, you know a reasonable threat, like a very serious, not just reasonable, but very serious threat. And they do, and it worked. And so personally, uh, I think it was great. And I'm glad that he's happy with it, too. And again, sooner or later, everybody's going to be killed off at some point, uh, you know, in the long uh, run of things here. So, 
Uh, it's just the way it goes. And, uh, you know, uh, we're going to miss seeing him on the, on the show, I think, uh, especially people that are huge fans of the character. But it's it's necessary. It's, it's what they got to do to keep The Walking Dead going. And I'm happy the show is still going and that they didn't decide to just end it once Rick, uh, Rick left, right? So uh, that's it, man. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments below. How are you feeling about that one? How do you feel about Jesus leaving the, uh, the television series now that you know all the information and the story behind it? What do you think? If you guys like this video, please thumb it up below. You can share, you can favorite. And if you're new and you want to subscribe, bottom left to subscribe. Thank you all for subscribing. Thank all of you guys for all your support. And uh, let's have a good uh, little bit of a, of a break here. Let's do some videos where we're getting ready for the back half to eventually come back. And feel free to send me any questions or anything you guys have, video topics, anything you want to see. Uh, let me know and uh, we'll do at least three or four videos a week, maybe five or six for Walking Dead uh, leading up to the back half. It's Trev and I'm saying peace. I'll see you guys soon.